Taiwan's only native monkey species, the Formosan rock macaque, was until very recently a protected species in Taiwan. Once listed as an endangered animal, it was stripped of that protected status in 2019 due to the recovery of its wild population. In the years since, there's been an uptick in monkey trafficking and abuse by unscrupulous humans. There's also been a troubling rise in people keeping the primates as pets. Today, in our Sunday special report, we turn the camera to our close relatives in the wild and see how we're doing them harm, even with the best of intentions. Step into Shosha National Nature Park in Kaohsiung and time itself seems to slow down. This lush mountain in the middle of the city is known locally as Hoshan, which means monkey mountain. The Formosan rock macaques here are not afraid of humans, and they love snacking on human food. Your food got taken away by the monkey? Yes, for me. Only only things. This is Ling Mei Ying, the chair of an NGO that works to protect macaques. As a child, she saw her father make frequent trips to Shoshan to research macaque ecosystems, which she's now studied for 27 years. Now an adult herself, she's decided to follow her father's footsteps. Over the past 10 years, she's been leading tours on the mountain to teach people about its monkey inhabitants. When it comes to the issue of monkeys stealing food, some people roll down their car windows and throw food when they pass areas with monkeys. There are even people who bring a plastic bag with snacks up the mountain to feed them. That's how monkeys know that humans equal food. Hunting and habitat destruction once pushed Formosan rock macaques to the brink of extinction. In 1989, the Wildlife Conservation Act was passed, listing the monkey as a Class III protected species and banning its hunting. Conservation efforts over the past 30 years have helped macaque numbers recover, but farmers complain that state protections give monkeys free reign to ransack orchards, leaving humans with no way to fight back. We cover our passion fruit in protective bags. Maybe there hasn't been much else for them to eat these days, so they've damaged the bags and sucked the juice out of the fruit. Every time I come, I have to throw away 20 or 30 bags. The monkeys are quite clever. You can scare them off, but after you leave, they come back. Our residential areas keep expanding, expanding into their habitats. When they don't have enough food, of course they venture into the human world. If they don't have anything to eat, they have no choice but to eat the crops you planted. In early 2019, the Forestry Bureau delisted Formosan rock macaques as a protected species, designating them as general wildlife. The legal change has left the species vulnerable to unscrupulous humans. Although general wildlife cannot be hunted without a license or disturbed, the law is much more ambiguous on their treatment. For instance, the Wildlife Conservation Act does not explicitly prohibit keeping general wildlife as pets. Following a tip from an animal protection group, we traveled to a residence in Yuning's Sihu Township. At the entrance of the building, we found a macaque chained by its neck outside the door. The owner wasn't home, so we spoke with their neighbor. They've had it for a year. Before, it was owned by someone else. It bites children. The other owner had children, and the monkey bit. The owner didn't know what to do, so he gave it to this person to look after. The monkey has lived here for more than a year without any intervention from law enforcement. The government has a task force for this. How often do they go on patrol? They also deal with other matters. Whenever there's a report, our colleagues would go take a look. What they would usually do is confiscate the monkey and release it into the wild. Yunling County has 20 townships, so the patrols usually happen in areas closer to the mountains. 
Local officials say they're short on manpower and that they only intervene when an incident is reported. Even if there were enough staff, it would still be very difficult to catch all the people who have wild animals in captivity, they say. We often get reports along the lines of, there's someone walking a monkey at this park. Such cases are hard to handle because often, by the time we reach the place, they're already gone. If you ask people nearby whether they know of anyone feeding or raising monkeys in the area, they say, I haven't heard or I don't know. It's a Wild West show that plays out online with internet users advertising young monkeys on social media. This exotic trade harms the well-being of the monkeys while also putting humans at considerable risk. I think people in Taiwan are really lacking awareness of the bee virus. It causes a really virulent disease that spreads from animals to humans. Monkeys can carry this virus. Under ordinary circumstances, simply being near a monkey with the bee virus does not lead to an infection. But being scratched by an infected monkey does raise the risk of a lethal infection. We're in Shoshan Zoo in Kaohsiung. Over the past few years, the zoo has worked with Kaohsiung's Agriculture Bureau to provide a haven for abandoned or injured macaques. Hello. You're there was one time that a monkey was brought in after someone filed a report. It was carried inside a small box and it was lying completely limp inside. We think what happened was that someone took the monkey right after it was born to keep it as a pet, but its condition deteriorated, so they notified the Agriculture Bureau and said it had been abandoned by its parents. We actually get monkeys that were abandoned by humans quite frequently, but of course, very few people actually report that honestly. Vets can tell whether a monkey was raised by humans simply from their interactions with the animal. Monkeys that are overly reliant on people have a hard time coping in the wild as they lack the necessary survival skills. The trickiest part of this is that there aren't any clear regulations pertaining to feeding and raising wild animals. It's very hard for us to say what you're doing constitutes hunting. Of course, we could ask central government agencies to legislate such actions. Indeed, there hasn't been anyone yet who's come forward and said they got their monkey through hunting. The plastic wrapper turns and turns in the monkey's hands as it looks for food. It's the monkey's survival instinct kicking in. But to us humans, their actions often look like theft or mischief. Maybe what we need are measures that can help both sides. It's not about kicking all the monkeys away. They do live here, so there's no way to push them away. We just want some way to protect our crops so we can at least have a harvest. Can we coexist? I think so. Having wild animals in our environment is a great thing. We can promote environmental education and ecological tours to better understand the great outdoors. Can we turn them into a draw for tourism? It's something we can consider. They could be a tourism resource, the way that birds can be. We look, but don't touch. We don't make contact, and of course we don't feed them or raise them as pets. Today, there's still much for humanity to learn when it comes to how to interact with monkeys. Treating wildlife like pets may come from the best of intentions, but it can bring harm to both the animals and their keepers.